So let's take it a step further because you had, you had just mentioned that, you know, we see this process with other things. It's not just with food, right? Um, and so we kind of have this, this um, parallel that we want to draw between dieting with food, but also dieting with feelings, right? And we're kind of um, coining this term emotional dieting, right? So let's talk about what, what we mean by emotional dieting, because it, it really is the same psychological process with your feelings that a dieter does with food, right? So the first, the first thing that comes to my mind, Dr. Julie, is one of the factors is when someone is dieting, there's this very rigid belief system about good food and bad food. And the goal is to only eat the good food and to very much stay away from the bad food. Huh? An emotional dieter, I would say, does the same thing with their feelings. They've put their feelings into good and bad. And the good ones are usually the pleasant ones that are fun to feel. And the bad ones are uncomfortable and distressing. And they just want to try to feel the good stuff and completely stay away from the quote unquote bad feelings. Mm -hmm. Or they have this expectation like, you know, society or maybe culture or family culture, right. you know, sets up like this, um, like this judgment of feeling. So like, right. you know, to be sad is just like not good or to be right. angry, you know, like there's a judgment. Like if you're angry, there's something wrong with you. Right. So, you know, you, those are bad emotions. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's just like the bad food, you know, like, oh, French fries are a bad food or, you know, mm -hmm. pizza because there's carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. And there's a judgment on something that there actually shouldn't be a judgment on. <laughs> Right. It just is, right? So food just is. Feelings just are what they are. That's right. And so the more we try to compartmentalize them mm -hmm. and put this judgment on good food, bad food, right? Right. right. Yeah. Good feelings, bad feelings. We end up trying to um, restrict or suppress, okay? Mm -hmm. So we try to suppress those bad emotions, mm -hmm. right? Which we know is just going to then lead to eventually mm -hmm. them coming up in a way that feels out of our control. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Can sometimes feel overwhelming and overtake us. Mm -hmm. right? Think about like if you're angry at something or, or, or mad about something first, and then it turns into anger that mm -hmm. you're suppressing, mm -hmm. it's going to end up eventually erupting and sometimes erupting into rage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's that same parallel process with food, yep. right? So I, I can't have this ice cream, but I really want it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the next thing is I can't have this pizza, but I really want it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And then maybe the third step is, you know, I have this glass of wine and it disinhibits me. And then there's also this pizza and this ice cream. Mm -hmm. And then you end up that urge or that craving erupts right. into a binge eating episode. That's right. That's right. So dieting and restricting food can actually lead to binging on food and dieting or restricting your feelings can actually lead to an overwhelming experience with your emotions, right? They can flood you they can overwhelm you and they quite frankly can scare you. I think when your emotions, you know, finally rebound and come out in these really big ways mm -hmm. in response to not wanting to feel anything, that can be really scary and unfortunately can reinforce. See, it, I, it's scary to feel. I shouldn't feel. I should stay fine. So it can kind of keep you locked in that cycle, just like binging and dieting, binging and dieting can keep you locked in that cycle. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important. You're going to hear this throughout. Mm -hmm. Feelings are not the problem. And food is not the problem. Right. right? It is the process by which mm -hmm. you are approaching those things. 
Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like with feelings, if there is this judgment, there's this good feeling or bad feeling, I've mm -hmm. got to suppress this, mm -hmm. right? That becomes the problem because mm -hmm. the feelings are going to be regardless. Right. And, and so if you do something unnatural to something that's natural, mm -hmm. right, it's, it's, there's going to be a kind of like a, you know, pendulum swinging in the other direction. Right. right? A so, reaction. Yeah. So, yeah. so I suppress normal sadness. I don't let myself grieve. Mm -hmm. Then it culminates in depression. Mm -hmm. And then you say, see, the sad feeling is problematic, but it's not. If you would have allowed that sad feeling to be satisfied, okay, mm -hmm. it would have run its course. It would not have overtaken you. Right. And then it would have dissipated and it would be gone. Right, exactly. And it's that same parallel with food. If you eat the ice cream when you really want the ice cream and you satisfy the normal and healthy craving, mm -hmm. instead of thwarting it, then you would eat it, you would be done with it, you wouldn't have to overeat it or binge eat it, and then it would be done. Right. But if you suppress it artificially, mm -hmm. then probably on the third night when you really wanted that ice cream for three nights, you're going to end up, you know, going into that whole half gallon mm -hmm. and then feeling lousy afterwards and said, mm -hmm. see, look, I can't have ice cream. Ice cream's bad, but it's right. not. Right. It's the process that's problematic. Exactly. There's another piece with emotional dieting that I think is really parallel um, to food dieting. And that is kind of this hyper focus on, if we look at it from emotional dieting, like this hyper focus on feeling fine or feeling good and happy, positive, all the good feelings, right? Mm -hmm. And we see this with nutritional dieting too, like this hyper focus on weight or, you know, looking good or whatever that means to you. And the more we hyper focus on that end result, the more we end up kind of overlooking, bypassing and, and ignoring all of the things that are happening along the way, right? So the irony and the paradox here is that the more we can allow ourselves to feel the uncomfortable stuff, the more we actually do feel quote unquote fine, happy, pleasant. Um, and same with food, the more we allow ourselves to eat all foods and enjoy the foods when we crave them and really let our body, you know, lead us through the process, our weight is actually going to be better managed and maintained in a very organic way. So again, there's this beautiful parallel of when we allow our bodies to guide our emotional process, we feel better. And when we allow our bodies to guide our nutritional process, our, it's reflected in our weight, but also just kind of our physical health and well-being. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I keep coming back to those statistics. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because we uh, coined this wonderful term, it's wonderful, emotional dynamic. So. It's just like speaks volumes. Yeah. It would be really interesting to see what kind of statistics come with, you know, kind of um, artificially suppressing emotions. Yeah. I mean, we, right. we, we now have all of these statistics. I wish more people would listen to it regarding what happens when we restrict yeah. food. Yeah. But I betcha it yeah. would be a similar parallel process. Absolutely. I think so. Yeah. And yeah. over and over and over again, mm -hmm. it, it is so interesting how what we end up doing with food and oftentimes with our bodies is that same parallel process with what we do with our emotions and our yeah. psyche. Right. You know, and when we work on both, right? Mm -hmm. Allowing, let's say, for instance, how many times are we like completely disconnected from our physical body that if we are wanting to learn um, regular signals of hunger and fullness as part mm -hmm. of intuitive eating, right. we have to reconnect to our body, right? right? Right. And what have we been talking about? Like the first couple of video casts we're really heavy into, mm -hmm. we have to connect to up to our emotional self. Right so that we can readily know what those feelings are so that we can start then responding to those feelings right. in a healthy way, parallel process. 
That's right. And I think that we then see parallel fears get activated, right? So when we talk about if you stop dieting and really start eating all foods, I mean, I think the number one fear we hear is if I really give myself permission to eat and not diet, I'm, I'm going to go off the rails and just eat and eat meat and never stop. And you know, as a therapist, I really hear very similar sentiments around feelings. You know, they're like, Dr. Ashley, if I like open the floodgates and let myself feel and not be fine, I am going to be completely consumed by all of my feelings. I'm going to have a, a emotional meltdown. I'm, you know, not going to be able to function. I'm going to get so depressed that I'm, I'm just going to go off the rails. And again, there's this paradox or this irony that it's actually the opposite, right? The more you let yourself eat everything that your body is wanting, the better you feel and the more balanced things remain. And the more you feel everything that your body is feeling, the better you feel and the more balanced things remain. Yeah. So really what we're talking about in all of these areas that again is a parallel yeah. is trust. Yes. Okay. So trusting that whatever feeling you are having, mm -hmm. number one, if you learn to allow it and embrace it and support it, it's not going to overwhelm you. It's not going to pull you down. Okay. It will arc and then it's going to dissipate mm -hmm. and then it's going to serve its purpose and you're going to feel better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same thing with trusting yourself around food. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's that yeah. same kind of thing. So with intuitive eating, one of the biggest obstacles that I hear is, you know, I don't trust myself around food. Right. So it is, it is entering into that space where you say, let me work on these principles mm -hmm. and, and then start building trust within yourself that you yeah. actually can have eventually a serving of ice cream. Right. 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 You yeah. eventually can have two cookies and not kind of eat, you know, seven cookies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you're bringing up a great point about like this, this practice, this trial and error, this developing of trust within self. Um, can everyone just make sure that they're muted? I know there's a little bit of background noise. Thanks. Um, you know, kind of, again, these parallels of if I'm not dieting, I don't really know how to eat. Right. And I think, you know, we can see the same with feelings. If I'm not fine, I don't really know how to feel all of these feelings. And I think you're making a great point, Dr. Julie, which is the only way that you're really going to, to figure that out and, and get comfortable with that is to start playing around with it and you know, dipping your toe in that water, trying to eat some of those foods that maybe diets have told you are bad and, and really kind of coming back to yourself and seeing what that experience is like. And same with your feelings, you know, allowing yourself to dip your toe in the water of some of those feelings that, um, you know, you've, you've had messaging around that are bad and that you shouldn't feel and seeing what that process is like for you and starting to let your body and your mind give you the data and the direction as opposed to these external diets and messages about what you should and shouldn't do. Yeah, yeah, and I, I wanna deepen this great concept that you, you brought up um, because this really is working on a complete new knowing, right? Like, oh. like, for some people, I mean, most of our population is, you know, 40 and up, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of years, right. um, a lot of programming, a lot of templates, a lot of belief systems, right? A mm -hmm. lot of value systems that have become internalized and really entrenched as your belief system and your way mm -hmm. of being in life right. around food and body, you know, so please know that this is something that is difficult to change. It is absolutely very hopeful. You can thankfully change it, but it is messy. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
there is not, you're not going to listen to our video cast and then go off and change everything because you have mm -hmm. intellectual knowledge. Right. I, I wish it was that easy. And I mm -hmm. wish we were able to do that for you. So I want you to know that it, it is a parallel process with emotions. It you know? like, yes. like if you've never really allowed yourself to be angry and you've got, you know, 45 years of normal pieces of anger that have built up, it is going to be scary when you first start mm -hmm. opening the door to mm -hmm. those emotions that you have suppressed. Yeah. Okay? yeah. And it's going to be the same thing when you go to eat mm -hmm. something that you have restricted for a long time. Right. So I, I just want you to be able to know that, that if you are stumbling around with this, mm -hmm. which of course you're going course. to, yeah. This is not about you. This means that you're trying new things that are new mm -hmm. and you're going up against really old ways that have become so natural mm -hmm. that tons of effort has to be put towards changing it. Mm -hmm. And the pull right now is going to be to go back to the old belief systems and the mm -hmm. old behavior. All right. Mm -hmm. You're kind of going against the current mm -hmm. and all of that is really normal and natural. So it takes number one, a lot of effort yeah. and it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of repeating and stumbling and brushing yourself off and then continuing to go forward. Mm -hmm. And I think the most important thing in that process is not judging yourself. Right. Yeah, I was going to add to that, that I think, um, you know, also getting that support. Anytime we're doing something new, you know, we need support. I was just thinking about um, as we're all kind of quarantined and staying home, um, my daughter, we ordered her a new pair of roller skates. Like, okay, let's think of some other things that we can do that are interesting, that are keeping us at home. And, you know, she needs a lot of support as she's learning that. So I'm like, literally, you know, like standing next to her, holding her up, catching her when she falls, saying, hey, sure, good job, let's try it again, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think, um, again, that really brings us back to what we started with today, which is, you know, these themes and then also these exercises that are absolutely voluntary. So please don't feel pressure, like you have to do them. Um, but, you know, these activities that you can do around eating and movement and creative expression that you can then share with the community to showcase kind of just where you're at in this journey of trying and exploring and learning to trust. And mm -hmm. some of you are going to be a little further along because you've been working at this for a while. And that's beautiful. You can be this, you know, some of your... Um, sharing of, of these exercises can be a bit of mentoring for people who are maybe newer and need that encouragement that even though it feels scary and overwhelming, um, you know, you can get through those emotions and, and it actually does feel better the more you practice and the more you, you gain that experience and confidence. So I'm excited to see how the sharing of these activities really provides that support as you all journey through um, this process of trying new things. Yeah, it's always one piece at a time. Yeah. And eventually all of those smaller pieces are going to then result in bigger change that right. actually remains. Yeah. So, yeah, so to be able to share that, I think, uh, is really wonderful. So let's yeah. do just a little bit of a recap with okay. this new term, you know, emotional dieting. Yeah. And always, always, we want you to look at this incredible irony of this parallel between yeah. your emotional process and your process mm -hmm. relative to food and your body. Right. And today we really emphasized many, many different ways that mm -hmm. people actually restrict or constrict and or suppress your emotions right, right? because of certain judgments mm -hmm. on that good food bad food or fear of that emotion all of those things mm -hmm. and that parallel process with food right yeah. i have to restrict because this is a carbohydrate i have to restrict because this is you know a good food or a bad food that i've always you know had to manage mm -hmm. okay so when Ever we restrict, we go against the natural process that's mm -hmm. supposed to happen mm -hmm. because ultimately we're supposed to be connected to our self, our emotional self and our body self 
And when we respond to what our self is asking for and we step in and support it with an absence of fear mm -hmm. and allow it, it's going to run its natural, healthy, non-excessive course. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to bring us right where we need to be. Yeah. And I can't help but notice the parallels right now, too, with this COVID-19 experience. I know we're yes. out of time, but I just want to put that out there that I think we're all seeing ways in which we are restricted and yeah. you know, the effect that that's having on our emotional well-being and for some people, their nutritional well-being. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but as soon as I'm told I can't go to the store and I can't go out and see my friends, it's like all my brain is thinking about and I feel so like yuck that I'm restricted it's no longer my choice whether or not I go out to that store so you know what we're experiencing as a society with these lockdowns and restrictions I think can really be a an interesting thing to look at relative to then how we restrict ourselves relative to food and feelings yeah Absolutely. And I think you're doing a little bit of a teaser for our next video so. cast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really excited to be talking about, you know, the, the ways in which emotional dieting, it, it hurts us. And, um, you know, then we're going to be also weaving in the intuitive eating principles because for full recovery in this community, we don't want you to just be an intuitive eater. We also want you to be an intuitive feeler. Yeah. So again, you know, we're looking at how food dieting and emotional dieting have parallels, but thankfully and hopefully intuitive eating also parallels intuitive feeling. So we're going to dive into that even more. Love it. Love it. Okay, so we want to, number one, get your questions for next week. Yep. So anything that's relevant to today's video cast, maybe anything that's left over from past video casts or video yep. cast you're watching in the archives, please yep. send it over. We love answering those questions. It's just fantastic. And yep. we'd also like to hear some feedback as far as kind of this new way that we're structuring things. Mm -hmm and or if anything else would be helpful to you that we haven't done a current revision regarding. Absolutely. Because yeah. you guys are, are really the ones that are um, best to give us the feedback to what feels right and what doesn't. We always try to kind of get inside of yourselves for us mm -hmm. to get an experience of what would be most beneficial from you. But really the best person to do that are yourselves and yeah. we'd love to be able to hear from you. Yeah, and I'm really um, excited to hear how this concept of emotional dieting lands on you. So as you're navigating this week, um, you know, just reflect on that idea and some of the things we talked about today. Like, do you identify as an emotional dieter and where does that dieting show up? And then where does the emotional binging show up for you? And, um, you know, just kind of sit with that and notice, notice what's there. And if you feel so inclined, we'd love to hear from you in the community. Again, the more that you guys can share with each other, the more of a connection and camaraderie you're going to feel through this process, but we certainly respect everyone's privacy as well. So if you just want to keep those insights to yourself, that's perfectly fine. But if you do want to share, we always welcome, um, you know, just the opening up. So. Yep. Okay. One last thing, because I know that we got several new members since our yeah. last podcast, and uh, we usually do this at the beginning, but we were so excited about uh, unfolding our new structure, but welcome Everybody. everybody yeah really glad to have you here mm -hmm. looking forward to getting to know you better whatever you want to share mm -hmm. um it's just wonderful that you're here we just always feel honored and it's nice to have you in our community absolutely yeah okay guys so nice to be with you all in virtual spirit today and um, we will look forward to seeing you back here next week. Make sure to send us your questions. And um, I will be co-hosting with Amy tomorrow as we dive into the next intuitive eating principle. So stay tuned for that as well. Okay. okay. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.